Wilson's late penalty takes QPR to FA Cup quarterfinal. History Wednesday, the 19th of September 2018, 8:56 by Clive Whittingham ahead of tonight's visit from Millwall. We look back to February 1995 and a classic FA Cup tie between the two sides settled in QPR's favor with an injury time penalty from Clive Wilson. Memorable match QPR 1 Millwall 0, FA Cup 5th round, Saturday February 18, 1995 The 1994-95 season had started badly for Queen's Park Rangers with just one league win from the first 11 matches. To make matters worse, an attempt by controversial chairman Richard Thompson to bring in club legend Rodney Marsh as a director of football over the head of manager Jerry Francis had upset Rangers' inspirational manager and so Aldo Form did take a sudden turn for the better with two wins in three days at home to Aston Villa at Liverpool at the end of October it wasn't enough to keep the boss from resigning and heading to Spurs. In his place came Ray Wilkins, who'd brought a fine Indian summer at Loftus Road to an end before the start of the campaign with a move to newly promoted Crystal Palace. The Eagles were to be the division's whipping boys, and Wilkins was injured long-term in the very first game of the season against Liverpool. At Loftus Road, there was only ever one candidate for the job. Wilkins won his first match 3-2 at home to Leeds, and followed that up with a home success against West Ham before chalking up the club's first away win of the season at Chef Wed and another, memorably, on New Year's Eve at Highbury where Arsenal were vanquished by three goals to one. The Rs also started progressing nicely in the FA Cup, with an easy 4-0 win in the third round against Aylesbury, the original away draw switched to Loftus Road because the non-league side's ground was deemed unfit to host the fixture, and a 1-0 win against Premier League rivals West Ham thanks to a goal from Andy Mpe. In theory, another home tie in Round 5, against 1st Division Millwall, was ideal for Rangers, beat the Lions, as they had done 3-0 in the League Cup the previous season in W12, and they'd be in the quarter-finals and with the likes of Les Ferdinand rampaging around, who knows what might happen after that? But Millwall were a fearsome side for any Premier League side to draw at this time. They'd already knocked Nottingham Forest out of the League Cup earlier in the season before dispatching first Arsenal and then Chelsea, both after replays and the latter on penalties, from the FA Cup. Rangers could have faced a packed house and their bitter neighbours from Stamford Bridge if it wasn't for the exploits of Mick McCarthy's men, led from the back by inspirational American international goalkeeper Casey Keller. Predictably, that win at the bridge had been followed by running battles between supporters of both sides and the police. With Chelsea facing a free weekend and keen for revenge off the field, and Millwall's visits to Loftus Road never noted for the friendly atmosphere, hundreds of police swarmed around Shepherd's Bush trying to keep order. Access was gained to the Gold Hawk only by a secret knock at the back door, and if Tony the barman knew your face, For the most part it seemed as though the law enforcement officers would get their way as Keller's heroics kept the game scoreless, although a midweek replay down at the den ten days later would have suited nobody, apart from Wilkins it seemed who said he was always confident his side would have won at the second attempt regardless. Keller saved early at the near post from Gallen and then, brilliantly, when a Simon Barker shot deflected in the opposite direction giving the keeper a split second to react. At the other end Tony Roberts smartly palmed away Mark Kennedy's free kick. Les Ferdinand thought he'd finally got the better of his man marker, former R. Tony Witter, just after halftime, but Keller was again equal to the powerful header and tipped it away from the bottom corner. Keller saved one-on-one -on -one from Kevin Gallen with time running down, and all hell would have broken loose had Andy Roberts shot from 20 yards hit the back of the net rather than the base of Roberts' post with just 8 minutes to go, but a replay looked the likely outcome at that stage. The game hinged on a remarkable moment deep into stoppage time. Indium Bay attacked down the left for a final time and slung over a final cross where, bizarrely, center half Alan McDonald stood awaiting its arrival to try and head home. Despite the presence of the Northern Irish skipper there seemed little danger to the visitors until Damien Weber leapt into the late afternoon air, thrust up a hand and inexplicably punched the ball clear. 
the loft, McDonald and the QPR team appealed noisily as one and a penalty was duly awarded. The script now seemed written for more Keller heroics but Clive Wilson, with a trademark left-footed strike, slammed the ball home for the winning goal. The draw followed a day later. Wolves, Everton, Crystal Palace, Liverpool and Tottenham all went into the head. Wolves were a division lower, and Rangers hadn't lost to any of the other teams in the Premier League to that point of the season. They drew Manchester United, away, and lost 2-0. That quarter-final will be remembered for Wilkins dropping Trevor Sinclair in order to pick both Wilson and Rufus Brevet to try, and fail, to keep Andre Kanchelski's quiet, and 7,000 traveling QPR fans driving, the governor, to distraction with an hour-long chorus of Paul Ince is a wanker, that actually carried on right through halftime. But goals from Lee Sharp and Dennis Irwin were the important stat of the game and the Wembley dream was over for another season. Everton won the trophy that year, beating Manchester United 1-0 in the final with a goal from Paul Rideout. QPR, Roberts, Bardsley, McDonald, Maddox, Wilson, Impey, Barker, Halloway, Meeker, Gallen, Ferdinand Attendance, 16,457 Recent Meetings Millwall 1 QPR 0, Friday December 29, 2017, Championship QPR turned in one of their worst performances of last season in the New Year game at the Den. Only a string of typically brilliant saves by Alex Smithies had kept the Lions at bay until Jed Wallace cut the keeper out of the game with a deep cross and Steve Morrison bundled in his first goal of the season in his 25th appearance from close range. Rangers went long and narrow for the final half an hour in search of an equalizer which against Millwall was nearly as stupid as the arrangements for QPR fans after the match which saw many of us still within 500 feet of the ground at approaching 23.00. Manager Ian Holloway spent the night goading and winding up the home fans, who loathe him for his part in their previous relegation, behavior and performance that went a long way towards costing him his job at the end of the season. Millwall, Archer 6, Romeo 7, Hutchinson 7, Cooper 7, Meredith 7, Wallace 8, Tonicliffe 6, Seville 7, O'Brien 6, William 69, 6, Morrison 7, Gregory 7, Anyat in my 81, subs not used, Craig Thompson, Martin, Tordick, M. Gulu goals, Morrison 55, assisted Wallace, Bookings, Cooper 90, Fowl, QPR, Smithy 6, Baptiste 6, Sonu 06, Hall 6, Zolik 5, Smith 56, 5, Bidwell 6, Luongo 5, Cousins, 5, Freeman 6, Osei Samuel 6, Oda 69, 6, Silla 5, Wheeler 81, subs not used, Furlong, Washington, Manning, Lumley Bookings, Zolik 51, Fowl, QPR 2, Millwall 2, Tuesday September 12, 2017, Championship A harsh red card for Millwall forward Lee Gregory just before halftime swung the first meeting last season back in QPR's favor after a strong start from Neil Harris's men. The Lions had already taken a spectacular lead through McLaughlin after six minutes and physically dominated Rangers from the off. Steve Morrison almost lobbed in an outlandish second from a long range. When Jed Wallace made it 2-0 from an acute angle at the start of the second half the game looked to be up but Rangers laid siege to the Millwall goal thereafter and in the end Mossimo Luongo and Matt Smith forced two of the 30 shots the R's had across the 90 minutes into the net for a draw. QPR, Smithy 7, Baptiste 6, Onu 06, Smith 46, 7, Robinson 5, Zolik 6, Bidwell 6, Scowen 6, Luongo 6, Freeman 6, Washington 5, Silla 52, 7, Mackey 5, Lualua 62, 6, Subs not used, Furlong, Manning, Lumley, Wheeler goals, Luongo 73, Assisted Freeman, Smith 85, Assisted Lualua, Yellows, Onu 011, Foul, Freeman 39, Foul, Millwall, Archer 7, McLaughlin 6, Webster 7, Hutchinson 7, Meredith 6, Wallace 7, Tunnicliffe 58, 5, Williams 6, Seville 6, Ferguson 6, Cooper 58, 5, Morrison.
7, Gregory 6 subs not used, Craig Anyadinma, Romeo, Martin, Tordic goals, McLaughlin 6 assisted Wallace, Wallace 50 assisted Williams, Reds, Gregory 39, dangerous play, Yellows, Williams 26, foul, Morrison 51, Ascent, Archer 70, time wasting, Tunnicliffe 80, foul, McLaughlin 83, foul, QPR 1 Millwall 1, Saturday April 26, 2014, championship QPR's long, slow, uninspiring grind through the second half of the 2013-14 season continued with a 1-2-1 draw at home to relegation-haunted Millwall when these sides last met at Loftus Road. Assured of a playoff spot but too far away to threaten the automatic promotion places, Rangers plotted through the latter months of the campaign before somehow winning the playoff final at Wembley in the last minute with 10 men. One of many instantly forgettable encounters in that period saw Charlie Austin give QPR a lead from the penalty spot 14 minutes from time only for Joey Barton to bottle out of a tackle and Rob Green to make an absolute mess of a spoon shot from Scott Malone for an injury time equalizer. QPR, Green 5, Simpson 6, Dunn 5, Oninwoa 7, Hill 6, Barton 6, Carroll 6, Benyoon 6, Boylet 63, 6, Morrison 6, Cronchar 5, Zamora 74, 6, Austin 6, Doyle 84, Subs not used, Suck Young, Hughes, Henry, Murphy goals, Austin 76, Penalty, Jackson handball, Bookings, Oninwoa 84, Foul, Millwall, Ford 4, Edwards 6, Dunn 5, Beaver 6, Malone 6, Bailey 6, William 6, Martin 6. Morrison 16, 6, Garvin 6, McDonald 65, 6, Wolford 6, Meyerhofer 6, Jackson 53, 3, subs not used, Robinson, Easter, Abdu, Bywater goals, Malone 91, unassisted, Bookings, Beavers 59, Foul, Ford 76, Descent Millwall 2 QPR 2, Saturday October 19, 2013, Championship QPR were also caught cold by a stoppage time equalizer from Jermaine Easter when these sides met at the Den earlier that season. Rangers, unbeaten at the top of the league at this stage, look to be on course for a comfortable win against their lowly hosts when the excellent Nico Kronchar fired in an unstoppable first goal from a long range and hit the bar with another effort from even further out. But Richard Dunn's complacency in possession allowed Charlie McDonald in for the first equalizer and although Charlie Austin subsequently restored the visitors' advantage they were undone with almost the last kick of the after Millwall took a quick throw in with the R's distracted by an incident on the touchline where manager Harry Redknapp had been hit in the face with the football. Millwall, Ford 6, Connolly 6, Robinson 5, Sheeta 6, Malone 6, Waghorn 6, Bailey 6, Trotter 7, Morrison 70, 6, Abdu 6, Wolford 6, Easter 79, 7, McDonald 6, Keo 63, 6, Subs not used, Bywater, Smith, Lowry, Right goals, McDonald 51, Assisted Trotter, Easter 90, Unassisted, QPR, Green 6, Simpson 6, Dunn 6, Hill 6, Asuakoto 6, Barton 6, Henry 6, O'Neill 7, Phillips 82, 5, Cron Char 8, Forlan 72, 6, Boylet. 7, Genis 86, Austin 7 subs not used, Tor, Shivanton, Murphy, Emmer goals, Cronchar 26, assisted Barton, Austin 69, assisted Cronchar, Millwall 2 QPR 0, Tuesday March 8, 2011, Championship QPR didn't lose often in the championship in 2010-11, just 5 times in fact on their way to winning the league, but they didn't beat lowly Millwall, or score a goal in fact, in either meeting that season. The midweek trip to the Den in March came at a niggly time for Rangers. The full extent of the charges relating to the Ale Forland transfer were starting to become apparent and a 4-1 defeat had eventually relegated Scunthorpe was just around the corner. Millwall, in front of a typically boisterous home crowd, gave Neil Warnock's team a good going over with future Loftus Road loan darling and Ross Townsend impressing down the wing and striker Steve Morrison giving former Millwall man Danny Sheeta a tour at time. In the end, the only surprise was it took the home side an hour to score, Morrison outpacing and out-muscling Sheeta, not seen often, before lashing home. When Sheeta then chopped the striker down in the box a penalty was awarded, converted by Liam Trotter, and a red card issued which effectively killed the game as a contest. Rangers won the league anyway.
Millwall, Ward 6, Dunn 7, Robinson 7, Ward 7, Craig 7, Henry 8, Trotter 7, Maconda Wire 7, Townsend 8, Morrison 8, Harry 7, Lisby 66, 6, Subs Not Used, Mildenhall, Eastman, Schofield, Hackett, Barron, McCoy, Goals, Morrison 63, Trotter 73, Penalty 1, Morrison, QPR, Kenny 7 or 6, Sheeta 4, Gorks 5, Hill 6, Routledge 6, Derry 6, Forlan 7, Boozaki 5, Miller 71, 6, Tarapt 6, Smith 70, 6, Helgeson 5, Trimbanda 79, Subs Not Used, Cerny, Hulse, Moan, Ephraim Sent Off, Sheeta 72, Professional Foul, QPR 0, Millwall 0, Tuesday September 28, 2010, Championship tensions were running high at Loftus Road for the first meeting between the sides that season. Amid violent disturbances on South Africa Road in Shepherd's Bush Green, unbeaten QPR put their league leadership on the line against Kenny Jackett's Millwall side. Ultimately the match was a damp squib, with few chances for either side, but given what went on around it that was probably for the best. QPR, Kenny 7, Walker 8, Hill 7, Gork 7, Connolly 7, Derry 7, Boozsaki 7, Ligertwood 6, Mackey 7, Tarapt 6, Ephraim 6, Agiaming 6, Helgeson 7, Subs Not Used, Cerny, Rollins, Smith Barrowdale, Parker Booked, Helgeson, Fowl, Millwall, Ford 7, Dunn 7, Robinson 7, Ward 6, Craig 6, Hackett 6, Maconda Wire 7, Ward 6, Barron 6, Harris 6, Morrison 6, Abdu 6, Subs Not Used, Mildenhall, Smith, Henry, Rhymes, Laird, Robinson and booked, done, foul, previous results head to head greater than greater than greater than QPR wins 19 greater than greater than greater than draws 22 greater than greater than greater than Millwall wins 31 in 2017 18th Millwall 1 QPR 0 and 2017 18th QPR 2 Millwall 2 Luongo Smith 2013 14 QPR 1 Millwall 1 Austin 2013 14 Millwall 2 QPR 2 Austin Cronchar 2010 11 Millwall 2 QPR 0 and 2010 11 QPR 0 Millwall 0 2005-06 QPR 1 Millwall 0 Nigard 2005-06 Millwall 1 QPR 1 Nigard 2004-05 Millwall 0 QPR 0 2004-05 QPR 1 Millwall 1 Furlong 1994-95 QPR 1 Millwall 0 Asterisk Wilson 1993-94 QPR 3 Millwall 0 Asterisk Asterisk Barker Ferdinand Sinclair 1989-90 Millwall 1 QPR 2 Barker Wegerall 1980 9990 QPR 0 Millwall 0 and 1988-89 QPR 1 Millwall 2 Falco Penn 1988-89 Millwall 3 QPR 2 Francis Allen 1987-88 Millwall 0 QPR 0 and 1987-88 QPR 2 Millwall 1 Bannister McDonald 1972-73 Millwall 0 QPR 1 Givens 1972-73 QPR 1 Millwall 3 Bowles 1971-72 Millwall 0 QPR 0 and 1971 70 seconds QPR 1 Millwall 1 Marsh 1970-71 QPR 2 Millwall 0 Marsh Francis 1970-71 Millwall 3 QPR 0 and 1969-70 Millwall 2 QPR 0 and 1969-70 QPR 3 Millwall 2 Bridges 2 Clement 1967-68 Millwall 1 QPR 1 Marsh 1967-68 QPR 3 Millwall 1 R. Morgan, Keen, L. Allen, 1965-66, QPR 6, Millwall 1, Marsh 2, R. Morgan, Collins, L. Allen, Lazarus, 1965-66, Millwall 2, QPR 1, Leach, 1963-64, Millwall 2, QPR 2, McLeod, Leary, 1963-64, QPR. 2 Millwall 0, Bedford, McQuaid, 1962-63, QPR 2, Millwall 3, Leary, McSelland, 1962-63, Millwall 0, QPR 0 and 1957-58, Millwall 5, QPR 0 and 1957-58, QPR 3, Millwall 0, Lock 3, 1956-57, Millwall 2, QPR 0 and 1956-57, QPR 0, Millwall 0 and 1955-56, QPR QPR 4 Millwall 0, Clark, Shepard, Ingham, Smith 1955-56 Millwall 2 QPR 0 and 1954-55 QPR 1 Millwall 2, Shepard 1954-55 Millwall 0 QPR 1, Clark 1953-54 QPR 4 Millwall 0, Cairns, Clark, Pounder, Smith 1953-54 Millwall 4 QPR 0 and 1952-53 QPR 1 Millwall 3, Smith 1952-53 Millwall 2 Q 
QPR 1, Smith 1950-51, QPR 3, Millwall 4, Asterisk, Parkinson 2, Adenal 1937-38, QPR 0, Millwall 2 and 1937-38, Millwall 1, QPR 4, Low, Cape, Cheatham, Fitzgerald 1936-37, QPR 0, Millwall 1 and 1936-37, Millwall 2, QPR 0 and 1935-36, Millwall 2, QPR 0 and 1935-36, QPR 2 Millwall 3, Blackman, Low, 1934-35, QPR 1, Millwall 0, Farmer, 1934-35, Millwall 2, QPR 0 and 1927-28, Millwall 6, QPR 1, Beats, 1927-28, QPR 0, Millwall 1 and 1926-27, QPR 1, Millwall 1, Guard, 1926-27, Millwall 2, QPR 1, Middleton, 1925-26, Millwall 3, QPR 0 and 1, 1925 26 QPR 3 Millwall 0 Cable 2 Whitehead 1924 25 Millwall 3 QPR 0 and 1924 25 QPR 0 Millwall 0 and 1923 24 QPR 1 Millwall 1 Parker 1923 24 Millwall 3 QPR 0 and 1922 23 Millwall 0 QPR 0 and 1922 23 QPR 2 Millwall 3 Parker Davis 1921-22 Millwall 0 QPR 0 and 1921-22 QPR 6 Millwall 1 Chandler 2 Birch Grant Smith Edgley 1920-21 Millwall 0 QPR 0 and 1920-21 QPR 0 Millwall 0 and 1899-90 QPR 0 Millwall 2 Asterisk Asterisk FA Cup Asterisk Asterisk League Cup Connections Danny Sheeta Greater than Greater than Greater than QPR 2011-2012-2001 to 2006 greater than greater than greater than Charlton 1999 to 2002 Lagos born Danny Sheeta kick started his own professional football career by constantly writing to managers coaches and scouts badgering teams across the southeast of England for a trial Norwich had a look at him but it was Charlton who offered him pro terms Sheeta has rarely had a good word to say about the long-serving and well-regarded ex boss of the time Alan Kerbishley however, saying he rarely spoke to the younger players at the club. During 2001 Charlton loaned Sheeta first to Blackpool, then the following season we in Holloway's Queen's Park Rangers side in League One. Rangers were in administration, but putting a decent side together under Holloway supervision. Sheeta was signed right on the deadline for a Tuesday night league game at Peterborough where he started at center half not knowing half of his teammates, and was sent off for two clumsy tackles in a 4-1 defeat. An inauspicious start then, but Sheeta's enormous frame, deceptive pace and physical approach to marking opposition strikers quickly made him a fan's favorite at Loftus Road. He was also a very lucrative first goal scorer bet, always listed at 33 over 1 and a prodigious threat when going up for attacking corners. He opened his QPR account with a typical header from one such set piece in a 3-2 win at Chesterfield. Despite the administrators overseeing things at Loftus Road, Rangers were able to buy Sheeta for £250,000 from Charlton thanks to generous funding from the Winton family, who also financed the acquisitions of Dudu and Mark Bertram around this time. The moves provoked anger among rivals clubs, with Brentford chairman Ron Nodes, who'd made a cash offer for Sheeta himself, a particularly outspoken critic. Clubs in administration have been placed under transfer embargoes by the league ever since. But Sheeta was signed and sealed at Loftus Road and formed a formidable centre-half partnership with Clark Carlisle in the third tier. He became a cult hero, and although his ruptured knee ligaments in a match at Bournemouth midway through the 2003-04 season threatened to derail QPR's promotional push, the fact that he played on for 70 minutes of that match with a knee injury that reduces most players to a crumpled, screaming heap on the floor only added to his attraction. Surgeons grafted part of his hamstring into his knee to repair the damage, Holloway remarked that this was no problem as Sheeta had more hamstring than the rest of the team put together, and by the time he returned to action the R's were a division higher. Sheeta continued to impress in the new division. 
a whole new league of strikers, not used to his unconventional shape, underestimated him to their pain and suffering. Cardiff sullenly made the mistake of elbowing Sheeta in his gentleman's area as he climbed for a header and after 30 seconds on the floor to gather his breath Sheeta left the field, pointing at his assailant, and shouting that he was coming back for him. The following hour was as brutal as you'll ever see within the rules of the game and Lee was removed with 25 minutes still to play for his own safety. As Rangers struggled for cash with Gary Waddock in charge and Johnny Palladini as chairman, Sheeta was sold to Watford for £1.6 million in August 2006. A.D. Booth Roy's Hornets had just been promoted to the top flight but the Premier League proved beyond both Sheeta and the rest of the team and they were relegated comfortably before the end of the season. Sheeta remained, and Watford initially looked a good bet to return, before falling away into more financial trouble. Sheeta spent an unhappy two years back in the Premier League at Bolton where he made just 11 appearances, but reignited his career with a spell under his former QPR coach Kenny Jacket at Millwall in 2010-11. His form there on a short-term contract brought QPR calling again in January 2011, looking for extra bodies to solidify their own push for the Premier League. Sheeta's form was fairly wild during his second spell at Loftus Road, excellent in wins against Ipswich at home, Middlesbrough away and Watford away, absolutely dreadful in away defeats at Scunthorpe and Millwall. Bizarrely, he finished the season playing as an auxiliary striker on the final day of the season as the R's lifted the championship trophy with a home game against Leeds. Peck said in that summer when Tony Fernandez's perspective takeover of the club dragged on into August, and existing owner Felvio Briatore refused to finance new signings knowing he was leaving the club. The signatures of Wayne Routledge and others were missed as a result and Warnock renewed contracts for players like Peter Romage and Sheeta while knowing they weren't good enough for the top flight. In fact, Warnock had decided Sheeta wasn't for him after his catastrophic performance in red card and that returned to Millwall the previous season. Takeover complete and 25-man squad named without him involved, Sheeta found himself out in the cold for a year. He returned to Millwall as captain, and took part in their run to an FA Cup semi-final, before retiring. A real character, and somebody who will always be remembered fondly at QPR. Others, greater than, greater than, greater than Ian Holloway, QPR, manager, 2016 to 2018, manager, 2001 to 2005, 1991 to 1996, Millwall, manager, 2014, 2015, greater than, greater than, greater than, John Derry, Millwall, loan, 2013, QPR, 2010 to 2014, greater than, greater than, greater than, Rob Hulse, Millwall, loan, 2013, QPR, 2010 to 2013, greater than, greater than, greater than, Patrick Agueming, QPR, 2008 to 2012, Millwall, loan, 2011, greater than, greater than, greater than, Jason Punch and QPR, loan, 2011, Millwall, loan, 2010, 2011, greater than, greater than, greater than, Adam Boulder, Millwall, loan, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, QPR, 2007 to 2009, greater than, greater than, greater than, Stefan Moore, QPR, 2005 to 2008, Millwall, loan, 2004, greater than, greater than, greater than, Steve Lomas, Millwall, manager, 2013 present, QPR, 2005 to 2007, greater Greater than, greater than, greater than, and Ross Townsend, QPR, loan, 2013, Millwall, loan, 2011, greater than, greater than, greater than, Mark Bircham, QPR, 2002 to 2007, Millwall, 1996 to 2002, greater than, greater than, greater than, Reese Evans, Millwall, 2008, QPR, loan, 2001, 2002, greater than, greater than, greater than, Marcus Bignot, Millwall, loan, 2007, 2008, 2008, 2009, QPR, 2004 to 2007, 2001, 2002, greater than, greater Greater than, greater than, Chris Day, Millwall, 2006 to 2008, QPR, 2001 to 2005, greater than, greater than, greater than, Kenny Jacket, Millwall, manager, 2007 to 2013, QPR, coach, 2001 to 2000.